We are now going to be doing an installation of Android onto the OS X Macintosh operating system. So some of this will be fairly familiar because we've gone through it before. Um, so I may go a little bit quicker through it and, and concentrate on the things which are different. All right, so there are a few steps with getting this installed, very similar to the PC, probably not quite so bad, um, but still there's a bit of work that we've got to do. All right, so the first thing we need to do is install Node.js. So go to nodejs.org download that and do an install so you should end up with this particular package here you see there node there double click click on that step your way through it and that should then fully install from there once that's down downloaded and run for you then we're going to have to install PhoneGap as well now if you've watched the iOS installation video again same thing as what we did before so we're going to need to open up a terminal window and we need to going to go we're no, going to have to go into uh, super user mode again so sudo sudo and then we'll do npm install minus g phone gap okay and it'll ask for your password and that will then go and contact the server and it will do our installation for us and, and uh, get phone gap all up and running on the machine as we need it to. Now there are, again, don't worry too much about this deprecation there, that's fine. We'll let that go in the background while we do everything else. There are a few other pieces that we need as well. And so it's a little bit different in that we, we need um, a bit of, I guess, supporting files to go with it. So what we'll do is we'll grab Java. Now we need a Java for OS X, this one here, 2014.001. This is the one that includes Java 6. So if you go and search online, if you just do a search for Java 6 OS X, it should be the first one that comes up. The URL, as you can see here, is support.apple.com slash kb slash dl1572. Um, it's important that you get the one that supports version 6 because this is what Eclipse requires. So if you don't get that, it's not going to work. All right, so I'll just show that URL for you again because it is important. There's the link right there, support.apple.com slash kbdl1572. All right, so grab that, download that, and install it. It doesn't matter where it goes. So, well, put it in the default location, I should say. Um, it won't matter in terms of us needing to know where it is for setting up paths later on. So that's a little bit different from doing the, the uh, setup on the PC. The next thing we need to do then is install Eclipse. Now we need to get the correct version of Eclipse, this being the one that's got the Android SDK in it. It has what's called a built-in ADT, so make sure that you get Android SDK, sorry, Eclipse with ADT, with the Android SDK for Mac. So this is the one here. Um, again, a very simple search on the net and you'll find this and this will be the page you come to. Download that. Now that will take a while. It's going to um, be quite, I think, I don't want to three or four gig or something, some fairly substantial. So download that and get it installed on your machine. Now, when you install it, um, it's basically just a, a matter of unpacking it. So it'll come down into your downloads directory, and then you need to put it somewhere that you're going to remember where it is. So I would suggest putting it into your development directory or wherever it is you're doing your coding from, and just unpack it directly into there. Now you can rename this folder if you want to, um, but we're going to set things up in our paths. So it'll unpack and you'll have Eclipse and the SDK there. Okay, so once you've done that, then what we're going to need to do is set things up so that our paths work for us. So we'll go over back to the terminal window and we've got to make sure that we're in our home directory. So you can do a PWD and that was print working directory and it should be users and then your name. Now what we're going to do here is open um, our profile. So I'm actually going to do it in text edit. I could use something like VI which is the, the Unix text editor but it will be a little bit too complicated for you to use if you haven't used it before. So we're, we're going to open up the text editor from the command line. So we'll go open minus A text edit and then dot bash underscore profile. Actually, before we do that, you'll be able to see it, that this file exists already. Now, when we're in our home folder, we don't generally see everything, but if you do, you can see it here. 
it's actually here, dot bash profile, it already exists. So it's one of those setup files which are required. So let's go again, uh, open minus A, text edit, and then dot bash profile. There we go. This opens this up in our text editor. And then we can make some adjustments to it. All right, let's just get rid of that and clear that out of the way so we can look at what we're doing here. All right. Now, yours will look slightly different to mine. So you can see I've installed Python and a few things like this on here. So and not something you will probably see. But there are the important changes you need to do. And you need to create this here. Now, Android underscore home equals, and then we've got some speech marks on either side of it. And this should be the same folder as this one over here. So you can see in this case, it's users Steve Gregory, documents development, ADT bundle, Mac, x86 underscore 64, blah, 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 all the rest of it. And then that's actually pointing to the SDK folder. Okay, so I should actually clarify that. We go in here, it's, no, it's, it's, actually, it's actually this folder here that's the Android home. Okay, so the name of the folder that it was installed with and SDK. Then, now that that's defined, that's effectively an environment variable. Now what we do is we go down to our path folder, our path uh, specification here, and we're going to add in some extra um, folders or directories into our path. Okay, now I already have this one here. You don't need to worry about this because you're, you're not playing around with Python or anything like that. So yours may be very basic. You may not even have path defined, which in, in which case you're going to have to go path equals first. But what we want to do is we want to add all this here. Okay, from here on down needs to be added. So we've got dollar sign Android Home as defined above with brackets on either side slash platform tools and then the same again slash tools and then path after it. So we're bo what we're basically saying is path equals path plus this. And we're adding that in and then export path underneath. Okay, so this is probably the most critical step of the whole lot to make sure you get that right. Uh, because if not, nothing else is going to work along the way. All right, so make sure Android Home is right and then set your path. And then save that. And then you can just kill it and go. All right, so at this point now, we have installed Java, and we've unpacked Eclipse with the SDK, and we've set up all our paths and our environment variables. We know that PhoneGap is actually working at this point as well, and there's only there's not really too much more to do. It'll just be really trying to run Eclipse and make it work better. Now, one thing I did mention last week um, was that some of the Android emulators run a little bit slow. Um, so what I would suggest you also download, while we're in the mood for downloading things, is getting a hardware accelerator as well. And you can have a search for this. But what you need to look for is the Intel Hardware Accelerated Execu Execution Manager. It's called Haxm, H-A-X-M. So if you do a search for that on Google, that should come up. And make sure that you get the Mac version. All right, and this is the file, so you could actually just Google that file if you wanted to as well. Axum dash Mac OS X and revision revision five, which is 1.1.1, .1 is the latest one. And so download that, and when you've done that, it'll be this file here, and just run that one there, and that will install everything for you and make sure that your Java uh, or you're sorry, your Android emulators run much, much faster because they are very, very slow. All right, so once we've done that, now we've, we've got everything running. Um, we've got all the stuff we need set up. So it's a matter of firing up Eclipse and getting Eclipse configured to make sure that that's going to work. So you'll find Eclipse in that folder that you downloaded. Open up Eclipse now. And what we're going to do is make sure that it's got some emulators set up. Now this is the same thing that we did with the PC before. So go to Window, which is a little bit different. So under uh, the PC version we actually have this stuff on the toolbar but it's not here on the Mac, it's under here. So we don't need to worry about our SDK manager right now but go to Virtual Device Manager and go to Device Definitions 
and then pick one of these that looks sort of like the size of what you're interested in and so it's a tablet for instance and we're going to create an AVD which is an Android virtual device and then from that we're going to say which target we're going to go for. Now I've installed some additional targets here and we'll look at that in a second. Um, so whatever target you've got there it's, it's going to go for the CPU, you can pick one, skin and then once you've set that out that's enough really for it to then create a virtual device. So here's my list of virtual devices that I've got over here. So these are the ones that Eclipse can run and they appear as um, as an emulator that we can put our code on. So that, that will start when we want to have a look at it. Now so once you've set that up the other thing we just mentioned before was the SDK. Now by default it will ship with everything that you need but it may not be the current versions that PhoneGap requires. So if you're having problems with PhoneGap working one thing you can look at is this SDK manager. Now I have found on the PC particularly that I needed to have version 19 of all the SDK set up um, on there and, and you, you might find the same thing here on the Mac as well. So um, what I've gone through and done is clicked on here for Android 4.4.2, grabbed all the cup of copies of that and I think wherever else it mentions 19 along the way. There we go, SDK build tools as well. Um, and then, then clicked on that and clicked install. That will take a while. I think when I installed it last time it took three hours. So it's quite a big job getting all this up and running. So don't, don't assume that you're going to get this done in sort of five or ten minutes. It's a bit of work to it. All right. So that's most of what you need for Eclipse. To, so we've got all the software installed. Now really what we've got to do is just um, create ourselves a little project and make sure it works. So let's go back to where we were over here and we'll go to development and get out of there. And we've already got this one called My App. Now this is from where I was in, in iOS before. We, did, we created an, a, uh, a new app. Now I'll just make sure that I'm in the same spot here. So I'm going to go to uh, Documents and Development. That's where I'm running everything out of. Okay, so you can see I've got my app here and I've got my bundle of, of uh, stuff relating to Android up there. Okay, now I previously, as I mentioned, I created this already. And just in case you don't want to have to sit through uh, the iOS one, you're not interested in it. Um, in order to do that, to create that, I typed PhoneGap create my app and that's what created this structure over here. So if you haven't done that you can certainly do that if you're, you're interested in only doing Android and, and, uh, and not having a native iOS one on your Mac as well. So, so that's how that was set up. Now what you will notice if we look over here is that currently in the platforms is only iOS. So what we want to do now is add in to this project a support for the Android platform as well. So we can go phone gap platform add Android. Now you've got to make sure at this point that you're actually in the my app directory which I'm not right now so just double check that. No I'm definitely not. So you need to change into my app otherwise it won't work. Okay and we'll do it again. Phone gap platform add Android. There we go, that's done. Now if we look over here under Platforms, we'll see we've now got an Android platform and an iOS platform, and separate code for each. Okay, so you can see there's Hello World there, and then over here we've got Android, and I guess the thing that's missing here is that if we looked under iOS, we could just double click on that and fire up Xcode. Over here, not quite so obvious, so we're gonna have to do this through Eclipse. So let's do that now, we'll go back to Eclipse, all right, now what we're going to want to do now is, is open up that project that's been created for us. So we go File, New Project. So it's not Android Application Project, it's a new project. So that, that can be a bit confusing. So File, New Project. And then you'll see here, under Android here, there's the option to bring in an Android project from existing code. So that's what we want to do. We want to pull it in because it's already been created. And then we browse to where it was actually made. So the My App folder should have it on. It's, it's going to have a look through there and there it is. Found it under Platforms Android. So I had a, had a look through that whole structure and 
discovered that we have an Android project in there. So, yes please, let's do that. Bring it in. Here you can see it. Hello world. And it may start off, it'll give you some warnings, but it generally will kind of work itself out and it should be okay. All right, so from that, then it's simply just a matter of running it. Now I've got a hardware accelerated installer on this, so that should uh, actually run reasonably quickly for us. If not, if it doesn't work, you can, uh, you can actually fire up one of these emulators first and then run it. So that would be, just while it's thinking about it, we'll, we'll show you how you would do that. So you go into the virtual device manager and you click on the one you want and you'd go start. So if this doesn't work, then that's what we'll, we'll do. So we're actually, Hex is working and emulator runs in fast virtual mode. So that's good. So it means it's picked up our hardware acceleration and we should, here it is. It's starting up now. So we'll give that a little while. It still does take a little while to boot, so it's, don't expect it to be quite as quick as what we saw under iOS. But you can watch it in the console and see what it's up to. So we say it's starting up, and there we go, device is ready. So we've now completed a, a full installation of everything that's required. We've got it running on iOS, and we've also got it running on Android. So everything is working. So uh, if you've been following along the, the series so far, we, we have it working on PCs, we have it working on Macs, and we've got two platforms, and we can also deploy via the cloud as well for additional platforms that we, want, we might want as well. All right, so we might leave it there, and then from now on, we'll be really pretty much working on the writing code instead of just configuring things and downloading them and changing environment variables. So it should get a bit more interesting from now on.